Good morning. Welcome to the Wichita Police Department Inner Watch, Wednesday, January 17th. We have a special announcement today, special uh, announcement that we're going to have today during our Wichita Police Department media briefing. City Manager Robert Layton is here to speak about the Citizens Review Board. So I will hand it over to the City Manager. Appreciate him coming to speak with us this morning. City Manager. Good morning, everybody. Um, during the past several years, uh, Wichita has worked extremely hard on community engagement and understanding issues of concern between uh, our citizens and the Wichita Police Department. And we continue to do so. Um, in that vein, recent incidents uh, make today's announcement timely. I want to assure the public that we've heard you and your concerns. We continue to hear you and we're committed to taking appropriate steps and actions to improve the policies, procedures, training, and tactics of our police department. Today I'm here to announce the launch of an extremely important board, the Wichita Citizens Review Board. The board was recommended uh, in uh, the police department assessment that was conducted by Wichita State University and was released in 2016. The primary purpose of the board is to advise policymakers and staff with the goal of improving oversight, accountability, and transparency. The board replaces the current city manager's review board and will have uh, greater duties than the current board. And I'll, I'll go over those for you. The board will assist the city, uh, my office, and the Wichita Police Department in policy development, education, community outreach, and communications. The board um, is uh, wor working, will work to create a dialogue between community representatives and the police department, will assist with community outreach efforts, and continue to provide assistance uh, in activities related to bias-based uh, policing. The board also has the ability to review post-discipline findings of our department's Professional Standards Bureau, and in matters of, uh, of alleged officer misconduct, and offer feedback and recommendations. The board will have a greater voice in the process than the previous city manager's review board. The board consists of seven members. Uh, we have also appointed six alternates because of the significant amount of training that is necessary to go into the, to serving on this board. Uh, they're all appointed by me, uh, representing a cross, cross section of the community uh, in order to provide, uh, I think, a legitimate voice for the community uh, in police related matters. In keeping with our commitment to open and transparent government, uh, all of the board's meetings will be open to the public. So let me announce the members of the board. You should all have a handout um, that has the names, or the, you'll receive it now, has the names of the appointees and their alternates. Uh, pastor Timothy Sims, uh, the pastor from Plainview Church of God in Christ, uh, will be serving on the board. Uh, he served on the previous city manager review board and repre represents continuity between that board and this new one. Uh, Mr. Dennis Bender, who is the executive director of the Union Rescue Mission. Uh, he's an advocate for those who suffer from disease, addiction, and homelessness. He too will serve on the board. Uh, Jay Fowler, a trial lawyer and partner with Fulston Seifkin, uh, former president of the Wichita Bar Association, uh, is also going to serve on the board. Annabelle LaRumbe, uh, uh, receptionist with the Greg Buki Law Office and a community advocate will serve as well. Robert Thompson, logistics manager with Cargill and a graduate of the Citizens Police Academy will serve. Sean Rojas, uh, director of civic engagement for Kansas Leadership Center and also a district advisory board member will serve. And the seventh member is uh, Tanya Soder, uh, vice president of human resources for Cindio also on the Board of Directors for Family Promise of Greater Wichita. We then have six alternates, alternates excuse me, uh, Mr. Odell Harris, Jr., who is a behavior specialist for Wichita Public Schools and has 10 years of pastoral experience. Uh, Jaime Lopez, who is an HR manager with Quick Shop, Quick Shop excuse me, and also uh, an adjunct professor with University of Phoenix. Um, excuse me. Another alternate is Mr. Paul Kitchen, who is a teacher with uh, USD 259 and also is an adjunct professor or instructor with Wichita State and Newman. 
uh, Luna, uh, Stephanie Luna, who is a, an associate with Bed Bath & Beyond, has four years of experience as a career transition specialist for Flint Hills Job uh, Core Center and is also an online instructor for Hutchison Community College. Uh, Sharon Aislager, who is a retired librarian and active member of the League of Women Voters. And then Janet Miller, who is administrative coordinator for the Wichita Area Sexual Assault Center and former city council member. I'm also pleased to announce that former United States Attorney Barry Grissom has agreed to serve as an advisor to the Citizens Review Board. Uh, he's going to lend his expertise and experience in police-related matters to the board to address uh, questions and issues they have as they review incidents and also as they review policies and procedures. Uh, Mr. Grissom is also a member of the Attorney General's Advisory Committee at the Department of Justice. I'm looking forward to the work uh, that will be done by this group. Uh, I think it's a, a significant uh, group of citizens who have a very, or really a critical charge uh, in terms of reviewing uh, our policies and procedures in the police department and uh, making us stronger and better as we go far forward. With that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you have regarding the board, uh, its membership, and, and the altar. Can you again highlight the big differences between your um, city manager's review board, which is now disassembled, right. with this new one? Right. Um, this one is probably going to be more proactively. If um, In the past, they uh, responded to complaints that were brought forward, uh, but they were not uh, actively involved in incident review. They could ask for uh, the ability to do that, but they didn't really get actively involved in that and they did not drill down very deeply in policies and procedures. And so uh, this group will be empowered to do a lot more in terms of bringing uh, guidance uh, to the department as they establish policies. How will this group be trained to look at those situations critically and analyze them? Yeah, great question. In fact, I'm going to turn that over to the chief if he's willing to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. Could, you, could you repeat that again? Does, how will these individuals be trained to look at um, situations or misconduct issues that uh, analyze them critically. Yeah, well, there'll be a similar training program to like the Citizens Police Academy that they'll go through so they kind of understand some of the uh, the basic training that our officers get as well as some of the legal uh, training from the law office. Do you know how long that training is going to take? Um, yeah, it'll probably be uh, anywhere from, uh, what are we looking at, 12 to 16 hours, yeah. I believe, yeah. And then it will be continuous as well as issues come up. We'll bring in subject matter experts. Uh, if certain questions arise that uh, that require that. And how long is the tenure of these um, members again? Um, we staggered it so that we didn't have them all leaving. Doug, do you remember what? Uh, well, we get you we'll, that. we'll get you that. I'd, yeah. When will it be their first meeting? Uh, have we set the date? We are currently working on that now. We're hoping yeah. within the next couple of weeks to have our first orientation. Um, Obviously, we have seven very d uh, broad and diverse uh, members. Can you explain how these were appointed? I guess that might be yeah. more like yeah. city manager. Uh, if you remember, um, I'm going to say maybe 45 days ago, we solicited, maybe a little longer than that, we solicited um, applications, and we received over 100 applications for uh, service on the board. We went through, and the whole idea, again, was to get us a representative group, uh, one that uh, reflected the community and um, uh, was balanced in that regard. I've also looked at uh, trying to balance from a gender standpoint and from uh, uh, residents in terms that we have folks from all portions of the community that are represented. So it took us a while to try to get, look at people who were highly qualified, uh, represented a viewpoint uh, that may be different than some others on the board so that we could hear from everyone and then also represented all elements of the community in terms of where they live. What will the role of alternates be? Will they attend all the meetings and training? Will they fill in if somebody's missing? The alternates are there to fill in if we lose someone, and that's, and that's given the kind of people that are on this board. It is possible that someone, either because of their schedule or because they move, will, will not be able to serve any longer. Um, they will go through the full training, first of all, and then they will have the option to attend meetings, but they will not be able to participate in the discussion because they will not be members. So for sake of continuity, if they want to attend meetings, 
um, or re at least receive the minutes and so they can track the issues, we'll, we'll expect them to do that. That way, if we have an opening and they fill that opening, they'll, they'll pretty much be up to speed. When did the application or the collection process start? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that exact date, but I'm, I'm going to say it's probably 60 days ago, maybe? It was, it was around November 1st. Okay, November 1st. Can you guys look at any other communities with a similar board to see how they did their process yeah. and if it you want to talk? successful? Sure. Yeah. yeah, you know, there is no one-size-fits-all, and every community is different, and this was put together with uh, community input as well as uh, internal stakeholders, and so there is uh, many, many different models, and we examined all those, and and brought those forward for uh, the manager to consider. Are there any specific models that you guys looked at that you can reference? Um, well, you know, I want to say there is uh, uh, the number of review boards are growing. I think we're around 100 nationally or so, and, and you know, <coughs> I might be off a little bit. But uh, it is as, you know, and my philosophy is uh, that we police with the consent of the people. So I welcome the uh, oversight, uh, citizen involvement in what we're doing, looking at our policies and our practices and asking those tough questions. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm really excited for this, this board to, to get, get up and running. I know one of the concerns was back in November, subpoena power. Can you just address that one more time? Has that been uh, rediscussed or where are we at regarding that? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll evaluate this as we go forward. But ultimately, subpoena power means uh, different investigations, and it would require uh, a lot of different work with uh, labor and contracts and also uh, examining state law. So if this board comes to a decision that a policy change needs to be made or, or recommendation on action, what then happens with that recommendation? Does it go through the department? Or does it go through city manager's office? Or how do their recommendations go forward? Yeah, well, we discuss it with them at our level first. And so I've had experience with civilian review boards before, and I find that uh, oftentimes that there is a consensus and understanding on why things exist, and um, you know there's a lot of robust discussion. But ultimately, what I found is that everybody usually comes together in the end with the, the right same kind of focus and ideas. One thing I wanted to add uh, on that is because these are open meetings, whatever recommendations they make will be open to the public. They'll know what, what recommendations, and, and they'll know about the dialogue with the chief. We have one more question. Uh, some police investigations contain information that doesn't make it to the public. Will members of the board get any of that information that other members of the public don't get? Yeah. Uh, again, the, it, we're, as we go through this, we'll have to establish some procedures in terms of how we handle uh, issues of confidence. There'll be probably some issues that represent either for legal reasons or because of our HR policies that They'll probably have to go into closed session to discuss and to maintain confidentiality. We'll try to keep that to a minimum, um, but uh, again, we have to protect the rights of the individuals that are involved in an incident uh, as well, and that could be both on the victim side as well as on the officer side. Um, but those are going to be well thought out and reasoned, and again, I, th I think it's important in terms of having Mr. Grissom involved in the process along with uh, our own legal staff that we'll be able to work through those issues. Again. This doesn't work if we're not as transparent as possible. Will this review board actually review uh, very uh, incidents that have occurred in recent uh, weeks, including the swatting incident? Uh, yes, th they will. When we get to the point where we can talk about, when we provide them investigative reports, they will have the opportunity to review those. And there'll be a number of issues that they'll review that are not high profile, but where the chief has some concerns or questions and would like to get a citizen perspective. And so uh, this is, uh, even though it's a city manager review board, I anticipate they'll probably have more work with the, uh, with the chief than they will with me. But it's to provide both of us, as well as the mayor and council, with guidance as we go forward. So will it be up to the city always to determine what situations they review, or will they have some input? Of, I mean, can they say, hey, Yes. Okay. Yes, they will have the ability to do that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate City Manager Robert Layton and Chief of Police Gordon Ramsey coming in today. I know the Wichita Police Department is looking forward to this Citizen Review Board to add that level of transparency and accountability as we continue to work hard each and every day to keep this community safe and work in partnership with our community. I know some of the members of the board are, are here with us today, uh, available to, to talk to the uh, media if they have uh, any questions for them as well. 
uh, this morning. Uh, so that's what we have for our briefing, unless anybody has any questions for me. Uh, yes, we do have a question regarding uh, the unsolved homicides of mm -hmm. 2017. We wanted to know, um, the recent articles have shown that there might have been some relation between uh, three separate, or two separate murders where three different individuals were mm -hmm. killed. Can you guys address that right now? Well, they obviously are in close proximity to each other, which uh, Lieutenant Ojal talked about that uh, when he came and gave his briefing several months ago in regards to the homicides. They're still open and active investigations. We continue to actively investigate them. We're asking for the community's help. If they have any information on these, to please call Crime Stoppers 267-2111, or they can call our detectives 268-4407. But due to policy and law, uh, with active investigation, they can't release any further information. Would that have been something that, uh, I guess, somebody in the neighborhood would have been told by an officer that these two were connected? I, I believe there was something that was said about just there. there's a close proximity, uh, which is what uh, Lieutenant Ojal said, and obvious, it's obvious from where the, the locations occurred that they are in close proximity. Uh, however, we're continuing to investigate these uh, homicides, and we're asking for the public's help. We do need their help, and they're open and active investigations still. Are we still at 10 unsolved homicides for 2017? Yes. Uh, do you have any information on a teen who was shot in the thigh on Conquest last night? Uh, That, that was the, okay, yeah, that was the one. Um, uh, it actually occurred in the 2800 block of North Grove, uh, about 645 last night. Officers were dispatched to a shooting call in the 2600 block of East Conquest. When officers arrived, they made contact with a 16-year-old male who had a gunshot wound to his leg. He had stated that he was walking in Grove Park, and two unknown males had approached him, and he was then shot in the leg. He was transported to an area hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Suspect one is an unknown black male, black pants, white shoes, and a jacket. Suspect two, unknown black male, red hoodie, black shoes, and black pants. This is still an ongoing active investigation, and investigators are still working to try to conclude uh, exactly all the circumstances of what occurred during this incident. Do you know if it was random? That we're still, again, we're looking through all the circumstances of exactly what had occurred. If anybody has any information on this, please call Crime Stoppers. Again, 267-2111 or Detective 268-4407. All right, that's what we have for our briefing today. Appreciate everybody being here. Have a great and safe Wednesday.